When you're home alone at night, it can be pretty creepy sometimes, right? Even as a kid, I tried to avoid reading any of my scary stories or watching anything creepy at night. So anyway, this happened one night when I was home alone. My parents were out late. They didn't leave me home alone all that often, but they would do it like once a year or something. I didn't ever mind. To me, it was pretty fun having dinner, watching TV, and hanging out in my bedroom by myself. That was, of course, until it was nighttime. That night I lay in bed, and I think I was watching something on TV, probably eating snacks too. I heard a knock at the door. I'll always remember this. It was three quick knocks. I ignored it. It was my parents' advice, and they told me if anyone came to the door while they were gone, I wasn't supposed to answer it. But then I heard something else. There was the unmistakable sound of someone walking down the stairs towards the door. My body became instantly stiff because I knew that there was no one at home but me. I tried my best to force my heart to calm down, but it just kept beating faster. I remember saying to myself, calm down, there's no need to panic. Come on, you're not a kid anymore. I told myself that, but I wasn't sure I was listening. The footsteps seemed to stop midway down the stairs. I scared myself with the notion of whether the owner of those footsteps was going up or going down. After a few moments, I somehow managed to convince myself that I was hearing things. I didn't want to be freaked out anymore, so I put my headphones back on and searched for some kind of comedy show on my phone. I could still hear rumbles coming from within the house. It was natural to hear the house settling noises, because our house was pretty old, so I tried not to allow my imagination to run away with itself. Then I heard a horrendous thud. It sounded like something very heavy hit the ground. Sweat began to drip down my back. I didn't really know what to do, but I managed to find enough confidence to use the bathroom. When the house seemed still, Usually I can't sleep unless the lights are off, I mean, even a blue charging light is enough for me to turn on my side and bury my face in the pillow. However, that night, there was no chance that I would be sleeping in the dark. I lay in bed for a while, but I wasn't able to get to sleep. I felt as if I needed to know what the sources of the sounds were. I managed to psych myself up enough for me to leave the room and run to the landing. I figured if I hit the lights in the landing, that would be enough to relieve myself of anxiety. If I hit the lights and saw that there was no one stopped on the stairs like my ears told me there would be, then maybe I could get a decent night's sleep. I was wrong. I ran out to the hallway, and before I could hit the lights, I saw a dark, shadowy figure halfway down the stairs. I knew that figure, that outline, he was unmistakable. It looked exactly like a guy who lived in our neighborhood. That guy lived right behind our house. He lived alone, in a detached house. I was terrified to see him in our house, especially when I was home alone. Not because I felt as if I was in danger, simply because I knew that what I was seeing could not possibly be true. I knew that man had passed. His sister found him. He had decided to end things by himself. It was sad, but our families never really knew one another. We lived in the same neighborhood, but we didn't talk much except for the odd, hello. It made no sense why he would be here. Why did you come here? I thought. The moment that thought had registered in my brain, I heard myself begin to scream. I knew that I was home alone, and no one would answer my scream, but I screamed anyway. But then... Something happened. After I let out that scream, it seemed as if I calmed myself down. I don't know why, but once I was able to confirm the identity of the person in my house, I stopped feeling so scared. I stood there for a while, and I watched him, and he just stood there staring at me. After, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so, he crouched down, and I felt as if I wasn't in any danger, so I went back to my room. I slept with the lights off. I felt so secure. I cannot explain that shift in me. I really don't know. I slept soundly, so unafraid. It would be years later I would learn that the presence in our house was the reason for our family to move. 
It wasn't just me who experienced the figure on the stairs. Both my parents admitted to being frightened of a black shadow. It seems as if I was the only one who was at ease with it. It's years and years later now, and I'm somehow waiting for the night that I'm visited again. I wouldn't know what to tell my husband if it happened though. This period of my life started out as something very positive, but quickly spiraled into one of the darkest periods of my life, and the whole thing just feels like a blur in my memory. I started dating this girl that loved the show Paranormal. She had a pentagram tattoo on her, but she didn't even know what a pentagram was when I met her. It was essentially a symbol from the show that looked very similar to a pentagram. Things were great at first. I got a job at a warehouse working the night shift, and shortly after, I was able to get a cheap three bedroom in the city. I loved the apartment, and I loved her. Our relationship was great at first, so I get the rental agreement signed and we move in. I have two beagles, and I had just brought in their little dishes that they eat and drink out of, and I set them down on the kitchen table and immediately the damn thing flies off the table before my very eyes. I didn't know what to make of it, so I just let it go. It freaked us out, but her more than me, because honestly I didn't really believe in ghosts until I lived here. I knew strange things could happen, but I just thought there must be some other explanation. The first major incident I can think of involved a brand new towel cabinet in the bathroom. I had just washed about 10 towels and put them in said cabinet. Now mind you, this cabinet smelled like fresh wood, and my towels smelled like fresh laundry. Well, the next day, that cabinet was saturated with the smell of death or rot. It freaked us out, but again, I wasn't jumping to conclusions, and anything could have been the cause of the smell. The smell was isolated to the cabinet. I seeped in my towels and rewashed them. The smell was gone the next day. Seems to me like an animal died in the wall, and the smell wouldn't go away. At this point, we had heard the place is haunted from the upstairs neighbor. Apparently, a seven foot tall shadow man in a hat had been seen. Neighbor's friend saw it and would not come down to the house due to fear anymore. Whatever this entity was, it seemed to have a sort of obsession with my dogs, and the dog's bowl in particular. So I'm at work, it's about 3am, and I'm in receipt of a frantic phone call from my girlfriend. She didn't work and just stayed home all day and night, so she experienced most of this. She was in tears, and so scared she could barely get the words out. Honestly, it still makes me feel the same type of way, remembering how scared she sounded. She was in the living room, which was a big space, essentially half the apartment connected to the kitchen, which was essentially the other half, chilling with the dogs on the couch, when she heard a knock in the kitchen. My dog, Scout, perked up and starts growling and staring in the kitchen like there was an intruder. She's looking, and before her eyes, the dog dish in the kitchen very slowly starts sliding across the kitchen floor. She basically went into shock out of fear, but called me in, and I came home and did what I could, which was basically nothing, and put the dog bowl in its spot and went back to work. Ten minutes later, I got another call. The dish moved again. Her mother picked her up, and she spent the night away. The sun was up and I got home and the house always felt safer when the sun was up, so I just went to sleep. The front patio light started going on and off by itself. It was creepy, but again, nothing too crazy. My one dog seemed to never see the entity, but my other dog would always have this terrified expression on her face and would behave as if another person were in the house. The upstairs neighbor was going through the attic 
and found some weird-ass note in the prior tenant's belongings that said, Madark is God. I gurgled Madark, and it turns out that it was some ancient Babylonian god. I bring up to the landlady that the place is haunted, and she confirms it. Cool, thanks for telling me that after I moved in. Shortly after, my ex starts hearing disembodied voices, a man whispering in her ear from directly behind her when she was in the bathroom. My voice calling to her when I'm asleep runs away and footsteps around the house, tables flipping over in the living room in the middle of the night, causing me to storm out my bedroom ready to whoop some burglar to find nothing but an overturned table. Whatever this thing was, it was horribly negative. This wasn't just some haunting where a ghost is doing random things. It had a mind and it seemed to be doing things that caused stress and negativity to take hold on my relationship. When things were good at home, the paranormal activity would rack it up. And then when things got bad for us, it would go dormant. It felt like it always had to keep everyone in the house at each other's throats. When I first moved in there, a moment didn't pass where it didn't feel like some unseen person was staring at me hard. I just always got that sensation, and it was unnerving. So then the nightmares and scratches started for me, every single night. I would have horrible, horrible night terrors, violent dreams filled with people I loved dying, and people in general being hurt. I would wake up with long red scratches all over my body, and would constantly wake up pouring sweat and calling out because the dreams were so intense. I honestly can't remember the last time I had a nightmare before I moved into this place, and thankfully, now that I have moved out, the nightmares have stopped. Fast forward a little bit, and I have a meeting for work that I can't miss. I plan to leave an hour earlier just to be safe, except my keys had vanished. I look for them, and look for them, and it starts to get closer to start shift and I'm panicking. I never lose my keys, and at this point, I'm ripping the place apart, ripped the cushions off the couch and can't find them. I left the place a bit of a mess, and got the neighbour to drive me to work. She picked up the cushions, put them back, and went to the bathroom. Heard a bang, and went out to see my keys neatly placed in the centre of the couch cushion, which she had just put back. It was unreal. This told me this thing was calculating and at this point I knew it was actually trying to harm me. If I didn't make it to work, I would have lost my job, and it somehow chose this one day of all to do this. Unreal. Now I want to mention this, because it fits the whole trend of the house attracting and fueling negative energy. The upstairs neighbor was this chick. Not a bad girl, but she had this deadbeat boyfriend that never worked, and pretty much just laid around and did drugs 24 seven and mooched off her. Years ago, this guy had ended someone's life over the last hit of acid. It was ruled manslaughter, and he served his time and was released. And a week after we moved in, my girlfriend caught him peeping through our window at her. So come to find out that my neighbor on his left, his family owned the house he was in. The house we were in, and the house to the right. Apparently all three of them were haunted. So to make a long story short, my relationship spiralled out of control. She left me, it had become toxic, and was for the best, and I don't blame her for anything. I have to accept that I messed things up, but that house added that last bit of stress on top of real life stress that pushed it all over the edge. I believe the entity fueled the flames when things were good, and would go dormant when things were bad. There really is a lot more to tell you about that place, but in all, it certainly wasn't a good place to live. I often walk my dog in my quiet neighborhood. I want to share with you a really creepy thing that happened one night when I was out walking the dog. I wasn't drunk or overtired or anything. I was wide awake. 
I had walked around the block as per usual, and I was heading down the street, which leads to my home. I stopped in my tracks when I heard a weird noise. It sounded like a voice echoing. It was almost as if it was coming from a speaker or something. I couldn't quite make out what that voice was saying, though. I noticed that I had stopped outside a house in my neighborhood. I felt for sure that the voice was coming from within that house. I could clearly hear it coming from that direction. The house itself was very old, and it's been here for as long as I can remember. I remember it from when I was young, even though I didn't live in the neighborhood. That house was in the process of being demolished. Demolition had begun about two or three days ago. There was rope and barriers to prevent anyone going in there. I think that the place had been long abandoned, and I was glad it was finally getting sorted out. The place was overgrown with weeds and was beginning to rot. It was kind of an eyesore. Anyways, I had no idea who lived there, or if someone was squatting in there, or something like that. I thought that it was empty, so when I heard this weird echoey voice coming from inside, I was pretty sketched out. It sounded like it was in pain and it was suffering. I guess I could describe it as a dry-throated groaning, kind of like someone doing a vocal warm-up incredibly slowly and they were stuck on a low ah sound. Or like when you go to the doctors and you have to say ah, it was so creepy. It wasn't a regular rhythm, so I found it hard to convince myself that I had mistaken it for a mechanical sound. It was irregular, and it made me feel pretty scared. I didn't know what to do. I didn't like it, and something inside me told me to keep moving and get home. As soon as I moved away from the front of that house, the creepy moaning stopped. Now, if there was someone in that abandoned house who was trying to freak me out by using some radio or speaker, then it should have faded away as I walked off, but it didn't. It just stopped. It was at this point my dog who is usually so good at standing guard, started to nervously shift around. Well, I took that as a sign to get on my way. I jogged back home with the dog, and that night I had three withheld number calls, and when I picked up, the call was silent. It was creepy, but I mean, it's not like it doesn't happen every now and then. It was just coincidental, I guess. I was pretty spooked out that night, but nothing else happened. I found out something a little later on. Since I was curious, I used every opportunity to ask my neighbors and the people who lived in the neighborhood about that house. It turns out that there was an old man who lived in there by himself until a few years back when he passed away. His wife passed away a few years before he did and they had suffered from the same disease. His son and his wife decided to sell the land the house stood on and that's why it was being demolished. I don't know all the details, and I could never take hearsay as gospel, but the story around the neighborhood was that the old man and his wife suffered with a disease that affected the lungs and the throat. The disease apparently led to a long and painful death for the old man. He took that road alone in the home. He saw out his final days in apparent agony so I can't help but think that that moaning sound I heard that night could have been him. Perhaps his spirit is still in there. It was really creepy, but I hope he's at peace now. My girlfriend and I both attend university, and we live in a relatively old apartment building in the town of St. Cloud, Minnesota. The building was constructed around the 70s, and though it's nice, something about it gives off an extremely eerie feeling, almost a dark, heavy feeling. But since rent is cheap and is close to campus, we moved in anyway. 
Let me preface and say that we live on the second floor of the building and have neighbours above and below us. We have never met our neighbours, oddly enough, but assume they are just older residents. We are both true believers of the paranormal and have always been curious about it. My girlfriend has never experienced anything paranormal firsthand, but for me, I have seen odd things throughout my life that I can't explain, and this experience happens to be one of them. This story begins as any normal night. We got done moving in and unpacking our things, and decided to take a break and relax for the rest of the night. We were watching Netflix, and we paused the movie and started to hear a loud banging sound above us, almost as if someone were constantly picking up and dropping heavy things. We look at each other and my girlfriend says, maybe someone's moving in upstairs? We didn't immediately think it was paranormal, so we ignored it. A few days go by and the banging started to happen around the same time it did the first. For some reason we weren't creeped out or anything like that. We just thought this time was the only time that people above us could move in because maybe they got off work at that time. Later on, the same night while getting ready for bed, we heard overly loud footsteps as if someone had heavy steel toed boots and was purposely stomping their feet against the ground. While in bed, we all of a sudden hear a blood curdling scream coming from a female upstairs. It was so loud, we could have sworn it was from right beside us. So we jolted awake and both had pale looks on our faces. We were terrified. We thought we should call the police, but decided not to. Perhaps it was a movie they were watching, but it was just too loud to be a movie. One morning I was in the bathroom getting ready to go to work, and I hear a faint cry coming from the same female voice, as if she were crying in the bathtub or somewhere near the bathroom since it was right above me. I then hear doors slamming and drawers constantly opening and closing. This sound goes on for another few minutes, and all of a sudden it's dead silent. My girlfriend wasn't around at the time, but she still believed me. No sounds of movement or crying slash screaming since then, and it's been silent for a few days now. The next week, my girlfriend and I decide to go to the front desk of the apartment building and tell them about the sounds we'd been hearing in our apartment. The reception lady looks at us confused and begins to hesitantly tell us that nobody has moved into the apartment and that it hasn't had a tenant in over two years. Dumbfounded, we ask if anyone could have broken in and caused the sounds and the lady reassured us that if someone were to break into the apartment, the alarm would go off, alerting local authorities and the building security. But they never had any alarms go off, nor did we hear any. We can't help but think what's going on there, and we decide to do our own investigation work and do some research at the local library in town. I didn't find anything that mentioned a murder had occurred in or around the area we live in, and to this day I'm still trying to find answers. We do hear the sound on occasion, but knowing that absolutely no one lives up there just creeps us out even more. We don't know what to do and can't break our lease. It's the middle of the semester and we were too scared to sometimes even step foot in that apartment building. I work for an apartment management company, kind of like real estate. I've been working here for a long time. I'm sure if you ask a lot of people in my line of work, you would likely find some with strange and creepy stories to tell. The company I work for owns about 12 buildings, and I manage them pretty much single-handedly. The way the company operates is by buying up properties on the market whenever they're cheap. This means the buildings we get aren't ever of the highest quality, and there's always a lot of work to do to get them up to scratch. I want to tell you about one of these properties. It's an apartment block and it's about 25 years old. We've been the owners of it for about three years now. The apartments in the building were all single apartments, 
Usually, our company would compete with others and attempt to outbid one another when it came to this building. But there wasn't any interest from any rival companies. When I looked over the tenancy agreements for the current residents, I got confused. It was as if every contract was different, and the rent payment plans were all over the place. It didn't seem normal at all, but having paying residents was a pretty good situation to be in. I guess it's kind of rare in auctions. There were three vacant apartments too, so there was money to be made. Two had been empty for less than six months, but one apartment had been unlived in for much longer, and that was apartment 401. I found this strange because 401 was a corner apartment, and should have gotten some good sunlight. I went to check out the building. 401 seemed to be the oldest looking apartment. It was really dated compared to the other two apartments. It hadn't been renovated, and I didn't know why. I guess since the building owner was selling up, he must have had some money issues and never got round to updating that one apartment. 401 was a pretty standard looking single apartment. The window was to the right, and the veranda was at the back. It had a small chest of drawers, a closet, two TVs, and various storage boxes. In the walk-in wardrobe, there was some bedding and a whole bunch of small items. Frankly, it was a bit of a mess in there. It looked as if someone left in a hurry. So I was in 401, trying to tidy it up. I was throwing things out. I wouldn't usually be cleaning up alone, but I was eager to get some photos of the dimensions and current state of the place. I'm a person who never really picks up on any kind of vibes. I've never had a paranormal encounter or, or anything like that, but when I was in that room, I felt as if someone was watching me. I tried to ignore it, but as evening slowly grew into night, I couldn't escape that feeling. I felt so uncomfortable when I suddenly smelled the scent of something unusual. It was as if I had just walked into someone else's house. You know, like each house gives off a certain kind of smell or scent, perhaps? It was like that, the scent of life in a long, dormant shell of a home. It was chilling. There was a full-length mirror hanging from the wall, and I found myself constantly looking up at it. The mirror was attached to the wall, and it seemed as if it would take some doing to get it off. I didn't want to look at the mirror anymore, so I shifted and faced away from it while I continued working. After things were slightly tidied up, I measured for a floor plan, and I snapped a few photos, and I headed back to the office. I decided to get in touch with a firm we use for renovations and ask for a contractor to take a look at the photos I took. A few days later I got a call from the renovation company and we got them to give 401 a fresh look. During the first day of work taking place I got a call from the renovators and it went a little like this. Um, hi. It's kind of hard to describe but uh, there's something in this apartment. What are you talking about? What? Wood rot? No, 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 it's not that. It's just uh, me and the contractor are now in the apartment and it's, uh, well, actually, you know, you better probably come down here if you can. Well, I headed down there to see what all the fuss was about and the two renovators led me to the full length mirror. Would you mind taking a look behind the mirror? We've pried it away from the wall and uh, thought you should see this. I looked back there. It was black with soot, but I could see something else. All these strange religious talismans and cryptic symbols. Something wasn't right there. In my line of work, you have to expect unpleasant surprises from residents. Accidents. Pretty much anything can happen. But when you see something like that, some kind of religious or cult stuff, well, for me, it just plain spooks me out. In addition to these weird things being found behind the mirror, one of the renovators complained of having a splitting headache and he had to go home. I asked the other guy what he thought of the place and if he was alright. He said to me, Off the record, I've been on plenty of jobs but none have weirded me out as much as this one. Something about that mirror man. I don't like it and I don't scare too easy. Well, we pushed on with the renovations. Actually, I had a Buddhist friend come and purify the place. You know, just in case. When the renovations were complete, the search for a tenant quickly began. 
After about a month, a suitable tenant was found. I set the rent a little lower to entice someone in. The tenant was a woman in her fifties, a great candidate. A great candidate. She had been hospitalized for some time and she needed a place to recuperate, so I figured she was ideal. I'll put it another way, I wasn't worried about noise complaints. She was very pleasant and soft-spoken. Things seemed fine and after a while I kind of forgot about apartment 401, but about a week or so after her move-in day, I got a noise complaint call from apartment 402. The resident said that the woman in apartment 401 was screaming at night, incomprehensible words while hitting the walls and throwing things around. I couldn't really believe that could be true, so I decided to stop by and ask some of the tenants on her floor how things were going, just in case they wanted to mention anything. They didn't need much encouragement. They told me all about their new neighbor. They said that she would burst out of her apartment and into the hallway at night. One told me some of the phrases she heard her shouting as she passed through the hall. The man is watching me from the ceiling through the gaps in the ceiling. Someone keeps bringing home women at night. This guy's either horny all the time or I'm living in a goddamn red light district. He's not gonna coerce me. He's not gonna coerce me, no. From what I heard that day, the police had been out several times too because she had been shouting this kind of nonsense from the veranda late at night. I knocked on the door of apartment 401. The tenant answered the door. To me, she looked entirely different. She had a discerning glare as she opened the door, completely eagle-eyed. She started the conversation with, I can't sleep at night, someone's watching me from the ceiling. It's like I'm under constant surveillance. Someone is watching me from dusk till dawn. I went inside to see what she was talking about, and there was a hole in the ceiling of about 30 centimeters. I couldn't be certain that she made the hole, or if indeed some other mysterious voyeur did. I decided to offer her out of her tenancy lease, for the good of the building, an offer she happily and readily accepted. I had to consider her welfare since she hadn't long been discharged from hospital. After she moved out, I hired the same contractor to help repair that hole in the ceiling. I got a call from him shortly after he arrived at the apartment. He said that he had found more of those strange pieces of paper with symbols up there. I said to him, just fix the hole for now and I'll take a look at the other stuff later. I told myself that the incident with the former tenant was just a one-off. I mean, she did just come out of the hospital. The next tenant was a guy. He was in his late 20s. He had a decent job and his parents signed on as guarantors, so everything seemed fine for me. He looked like a decent enough chap too. I greeted him and his dad on moving day and they seemed perfectly pleasant. Three months or so went by and I got a call from my new tenant's dad asking if I had heard from his son. I said that I hadn't, and he told me that he hasn't been able to get in touch with his son for about a week. He wanted me to go to 401 with the keys to do a welfare check with him right away. I realized that the rent hadn't been paid as well. Both his parents arrived and informed me that their son had been missing from work without notice too. I started to get worried and began to think the worst. We arrived at 401 and I pressed the doorbell. Unsurprisingly, there was no response. I then opened the door with the duplicate key we retained. I pushed open the door, but it snapped against the chain. It was open enough to pour out a horrendous smell though. The stench was so terrible that it caused me to almost throw up in front of the parents. I covered my mouth and tried to look in through the door. It was pitch black in there, but I could make out the shape of what I thought was a garbage bag. I called out the tenant's name. No reply. His mother called out. I could hear the sense of pain and worry in her voice. No reply. I realized during the intervals we expected a response to come in that I could faintly hear the sound of the TV inside the room. I told his frightened parents that I had a chain cutting tool in my car and I would go and get it. I came back and I told them that I was happy to enter the room ahead of them. I was still thinking the worst and I cannot imagine the pain it would have caused them 
to see their lifeless son in that apartment. I cut the chain and I headed in. It was dark in there, and there was garbage all over the place. I tried the lights, but they didn't come on. The main room was almost completely dark except for the TV. I called out once again while looking around the room. Then my eyes fell on him. He was there, sat at the edge of his bed, with the duvet wrapped around him. I shouted out in shock, and his parents came rushing in. They called out to him, asking if he was okay, but he didn't respond, he just hung his head. His hair was long, and he hadn't shaved. He looked almost unrecognizable to the person who moved in three months ago. I looked up at the ceiling, with the help of the glow of the TV. I noticed that there were black garbage bags taped to the ceiling. I opened the curtains to see that he had done the same to the windows and the veranda doors too. This was very unusual, and it was freaking me out. I called an ambulance, and went about removing the bags, as they could be a hazard. The ambulance arrived, and the parents and the son all went off to the hospital. I think they were all crying by the time they left. A few days later, the tenant's mum came and told me that they were taking their son back to the countryside to recuperate. She said that she wanted to cancel the contract for apartment 401, and who was I to say no to that? I mean, I could have dug my heels in, but I like to think I have a little more decency than that. I wanted to ask how he was doing, but I just didn't feel it was right to pry. It's been about two years since he moved out, and we aren't offering that apartment out to tenants at the moment. To be honest, I would be happy if no one lived in there ever again. We've had a lot of questions by the police, acquaintances, etc. It seems as if apartment 401 has earned itself a little infamy. Even the residents in the building won't go near it. One last thing. On the day I went to take the photos of the place, I found one photo on my digital camera that I don't remember taking. The camera is just pointing towards the ceiling, towards the part where the hole was made. I want to know about the history of that building and that apartment because the first resident's comments intrigued me. What I thought at the time was incoherent babble might hold some clues to the mystery of apartment 401. Especially the comment about the man bringing back women to the room and her saying that he was going to coerce her. I wonder what she was referring to. I wonder what stories the mirror and the walls would tell if they could. When I was about eight, we moved into this rundown house, which I later found out that the entire area used to be a First Nation camp, but there was a huge landslide some hundred years ago, and so the entire area is pretty much houses in a baseball stadium built over an ancient burial ground, and doors would slam and my dad was thrown from the wall point to point. The basement was terrifying and had a chain lock on it. And while my mother was in the bath, I decided to close the door since it creeped me out. But when I shut it, it slammed back open and hit me in the face violently. Those are just some of the examples from what happened in that house. And when we moved out, my dad and sister took down drywall in the basement and found satanic symbols all over the walls and an odd odor, which had a passageway to hell written on it. So, turned out the previous tenants were Satan worshippers, and the landlord knew, so we got the hell out of there. I know it sounds insane, it's insane to me too, but I think something attached itself to our family from that house. When I was 11, I was looking for my shoes when I opened a cupboard in the basement, and I felt someone breathe on my neck, and a male voice whisper, thank you, in my ear. That same year, my dad and I were in the kitchen at around 1am, and he all of a sudden looked terrified, as he's staring at nothing. I've never seen my dad so scared, and the room went cold. I'm not a religious person, 
but I started praying, that prayer that goes, Our Father. My dad was turned away from me, and I was mouthing the words so he didn't know what I was saying. But he turned around after a few minutes and said, I don't know what you said, but you saved us. And he refused to tell me what was there, and to this day refused to talk about what happened. He was crying and shaking, and it's the only time I've ever seen him like that. When he got his new apartment after him and my mother split up, I went to stay with him for a few days. And during that time, we would hear weird noises and things would go missing everywhere. We were sitting in his kitchen facing the stove since we heard a noise. And right in front of our eyes, we watched as the salt shakers went flying off the stove. For some reason, nothing paranormal ever happens around my mother, just around myself and my father and older sister. I'm 17, and my sister is 26, and like my mum, my nine-year-old brother has not had a thing happen to him either. On a side note, though my sister saw a psychic who told her that her dead boyfriend was attached to her, along with something else that felt evil, which is why we came to the conclusion that something had followed us from that house. When I was 13, my mother and brother and I moved in with my mum's old friend. Things kept happening, but now that my dad and sister weren't with me, it only happened to me. I was standing in the kitchen home alone when a fork flew across the kitchen and hit the wall. But when I went to see where it fell, there was nothing there. Another time I was laying in bed with what seemed to be sleep paralysis, but something grabbed my ankles and physically started dragging me off my bed. By the time I could move, I was almost completely falling off the bottom of the bed, and I in no way could have moved myself down there as I had zero control over my limbs. When I was 15, we moved into my current house, my mother, brother and I, and things were quiet for a while. Every time we move, it seems like things would calm down before resuming. Honestly, my theory is that every time we move, these entities have to find us again. The first time that something happened in this house, I was standing in the living room and a picture flew across the room and shattered. When my mum and brother are out, someone will play the piano at 3 a.m. And I know for a fact it isn't my cats, since it's usually two-handed melodies that last anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. Here's the part that confirmed my theory, at least to me, that something had followed us. I was laying in bed not trying to sleep, but I had the lights off and my eyes closed from a headache, when I felt someone breathing on me and heard a voice whisper, it's mine, but it was the same voice that spoke to me before I was 11, I would recognize it anywhere. I freaked out and placed cups of salt in various places in my room, along with different crystals given to me by my mother an aboriginal friend. Now, look, this next part I'm not proud of. I knew I was insanely stupid, but on my part I'm a kid, and kids do dumb things. A while after I heard the voice, I went to a bonfire and was drinking, though only coolers, as at a max, it was around three, and I was not drunk. So I went to my friend's house to sleep. She is First Nation and communicates with spirits through a Ouija board. Her and my other friends wanted us to use one of them, and I stupidly agreed. It answered us, and I can't remember what exactly was said, but I do remember her asking, Do you like Alison? So me. And the board said no, and then yes when asked again. But around this time, my chest became very constricted and I found it hard to breathe. I was hyperventilating and crying, and felt like I couldn't get any air into my lungs. They told me I was freezing cold, and my pupils weren't responsive. They ended up calling the ambulance, who ruled it as a panic attack. But the thing is, while I do experience panic attacks, and pretty bad anxiety, my panic attacks are widely different than that, and I was completely calm and not anxious whatsoever. So that leads us to what happened a few days ago. 
and I'm pretty worried that the Ouija board may cause this to get worse. So ever since I put salt in my room, nothing paranormal has happened in my bedroom. And so I began to feel safe in here, which I guess I shouldn't have let myself fall into that full security. I was sitting on my bed, my headboard against my window, and I had my blinds closed and a blanket over my headboard so that no one could look into my room. When I heard something tap against the window, I heard it for a few minutes, so I turned around and saw out the window. At first I saw nothing, but then there was something pressed up against the glass in the shape of a head. My light was on, so I couldn't make out any features, but it seemed as though they were wearing a hood, and that it was hiding its face from me. I thought it was someone trying to break in, so I started screaming, and we called 911. The police came and brought us outside to show us that there were no footprints in the snow whatsoever. Not to mention my window is too high for someone to be face level with, without a ladder or chair. So what else could it be, other than paranormal? I know what I saw. I stared this thing down for at least 10 to 15 seconds as I was frozen with fear. My mum called her First Nation friend who was going to come and smudge our house in a few days for us. But other than that, I don't know what else to do. I'm terrified, looking over my shoulder constantly and having to look out my window to make sure nothing else happens out there. If anyone has any advice or idea of what is happening, please help. I know this sounds crazy, but it's the truth. When I was a teenager, I used to hang out all the time at my friend's apartment. He lived in a three-story building on the middle floor. His place was pretty old and small, but it was nice enough. Because it was only a three-story building, there was no elevator, so I would often run into residents on the stairs or in the communal areas. There were some young people in there, mainly women. Everyone was nice, and everything seemed very neat and tidy. The building didn't feel as old as it was. I often crashed at my friends, and on occasion I would hear footsteps, more like frantic running and banging, at night. It always surprised me when I heard it. My friend didn't seem to mind the noise, so I didn't complain to him about it. My friend also was really proud of his apartment, so it felt wrong to do that. I kept going to my friend's house, and I kept hearing noises from upstairs. I couldn't help but think that there was a resident I haven't ran into up there. The nice and polite people I had met before seemed unlikely to be the culprits. I did once see a young woman head upstairs, but I couldn't be sure it was her. One night the noise was just so loud it irritated me so much, I asked my friend, Do you not hear that? My friend looked at me and then asked, What, the TV? No, what the... I mean the banging. Upstairs. It sounded like someone was running backwards and forwards, or jogging in place, even as I said that. It was really loud, but my friend just looked at me and said, Upstairs? He reacted like he couldn't hear anything at all. This was when I first noticed something was wrong here. How could he not hear all those frantic footsteps? He looked away from me and said, Uh, maybe it's your imagination. I got the feeling he knew more than he was letting on. I said to him, Hey, let's go up there and take a look then. I was going to put my ear against the door to see if I was hearing things or not. I wanted to know what was going on up there. So we crept upstairs and approached the apartment directly above my friends. I was shocked to see that all the windows were covered with newspaper, like an old store with no owner. The post box had been taped shut too to indicate that no one lived there. But it wasn't just this apartment. All of the apartments on the third floor were like this. It was only the apartment above my friends with the newspaper covering the windows though. The other two apartments just looked unoccupied. Despite all this, 
My friend and I put our ears against the door above his apartment and listened intently. But of course, we couldn't hear anything. Then suddenly, as we turned to leave, we noticed that we weren't alone up there on the third floor. The young woman I ran into before was out in the hallway and she said to us, Who are you guys looking for here? We left in a panic without answering her question. I couldn't get to sleep easily that night. Their footsteps didn't stop above our heads either. What was she doing up there? I should have asked her. My friend admitted to me in the morning that he had been hearing the noises the whole time and he knew that the apartments up there were empty. He didn't want to admit it, but he was just afraid. But after a little convincing, I managed to get him to call the landlord and have him check out the place. The landlord reluctantly came to the building to open the door to the apartment above my friend's. I stayed. I wanted to know what was making the noise in there. He opened the door, and the first thing that hit me was the smell of mold and stale air. The landlord turned to us and said, Whatever footsteps you are hearing are probably nothing more than mice scurrying around. We both knew that what we heard were not mice. I suddenly felt cold. It was as if my insides were cold. It was the strangest feeling. I swear when we were in the bathroom, I could see my breath, even though it was spring. There was another strange thing. Both my friend and the landlord didn't see this, but I swear I did. I swear I caught a glimpse of the woman we saw on the third floor in the bathroom mirror. Even though it was an incredibly short glimpse, I saw something hateful in her eyes and I had to leave. The landlord went over to me after locking up the room and asked me what the matter was. I told him that I felt something in there, some kind of presence. He nodded and said he was well aware of what I experienced. Some people can't stand that room. They leave in seconds and others leave in a few days or weeks. That doesn't just go for that apartment, but the apartments either side of it. I can't get my tenants to stay in there. There's only ever been one incident in that apartment though, and it was years ago. Young woman took her life. I don't know how she did it, but when I was told that story, I couldn't help but think of the noises I heard up there. It wasn't the sound of running. Now. Perhaps it was the sound of struggling. My friend decided to move out after that, and it wasn't long after that the building was demolished. The demolishing might have been a coincidence as it was pretty old and even the landlord admitted that he thought there was mice in there. He would have probably taken any offer he could on the building or the land it stood on. Anyway, I remember those nights at my friend's house and I still hear the sound of those footsteps frantically against the floor above our heads.